Hey, Ty. Hi, guys. Hello. Thanks for having me. And this should be interesting, if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> and we've also got JP joining us. Hey. So, um, yeah, basically, Ty's going to be with us uh, once a week, every week from now on to, um, you know, make our newscast a bit more interesting. We just loved his company that much during our E3 live stream that we had to get him back. So, <laughs> yeah. This is punishment for me um, disappearing at three o'clock in the morning without <laughs> saying anything. <laughs> Well, it was the Nintendo conference, so we can't blame you. <laughs> I was so tired. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we'll get into our topics. Um, as usual, This we go through maybe like five or six big topics throughout the week, and then we'll get into some other little things, just um, any other bits and pieces of news that we've seen throughout the week. And then... Um, I'll give it to you guys to see if you've um, seen any other news pieces. So, um, probably the most peculiar news that popped up this week, or actually might have been very late last week, was uh, a Nintendo PlayStation has been spotted. Um, so, we weren't sure these things even existed. But, um, and Ty, you still seem a bit uh, skeptical whether this is um, very much real. Even if it is yeah, just a prototype. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Uh, for those who don't know what is going on here, um, back in 1986, uh, Nintendo and Sony worked together to create a CD-ROM attachment for the uh, Super Nintendo. The idea was to explore uh, how you could use the CD-ROM technology to, you know, make games a bit better, have more content, because they held a lot more than cartridges, and more importantly were a lot cheaper to produce than cartridges. Um, basically, on the day after Sony announced this collaboration with Nintendo, Nintendo came out and said, huh, we're actually doing this with Philips, which led to some awesome quality titles such as uh, those Legend of Zelda um, CDI games, which we all fondly <laughs> remember and love. Um, Sony were a bit blackballed by this and they went, what the hell? Uh, we just spent all this money on doing this and Nintendo just left us high and dry. Um, so some guy in Sony basically went off and made the PlayStation. Year, what, 30 odd years later, um, some guy on YouTube claims to have found one of these mythical devices in his attic because his uh, dad worked with one of the guys on the, uh, on the um, original team. Um, now, I've inspected the video and the photos several times, and while I do believe it's an interesting bit of kit, uh, I think it's fake. Um, <laughs> one reason is, uh, for me, is that it's got the PlayStation logo on it. Now, while we were setting up today, I, I searched the um, uh, United States Patent and Trademark Office to find out when Sony uh, trademarked the PlayStation logo. And it wasn't until March 14, 1994, that they actually admitted that the PlayStation logo was a thing that existed and they filed a trademark. Uh, now, those who are following the PlayStation timeline will know that PlayStation launched in Japan on uh, December 3, 1994. So, um, yeah, so I'm thinking, you know, 1986 to 1994 is a hell of a long time to be sold on, yep, let's go with this PlayStation logo. Like, I, I don't buy it, sorry, but no. <laughs> You know, I think somebody's, like, modified, uh, you know, bits and pieces and they've put together something to to get some um, cheap hits on YouTube, but I, I really don't think that this is the actual console. Mm. What do you guys think? Fair enough, then. <laughs> what, what about you, JP? Are you a believer? Um, no, because I believe if it was a Nintendo-Sony co collaboration, then I would expect to see Nintendo's name on there, not Sony so much. Or I would expect to see Nintendo on there in some capacity, but here it's nowhere. Well, yeah, that's, a, that's another good point. There's um, Sony PlayStation on the controller, 
uh, Sony up the top of the console and Sony on the bottom near the uh, the headphone um, yeah. socket. It it's just it seems a bit fake. I mean, I know the yeah. yellowing of the hardware is is kind of cool and all, but um, you know, I, I I'm calling fake on this one. Yeah. Um, my other thing with this is that. As we all know, um, maybe this is a prototype of their actual PlayStation, or I don't. Though then again, they would be facing copyright with that controller right there, wouldn't they? Yeah, so it can't be a prototype of the first PlayStation. Well, maybe I don't know. Like prototypes could come in the flavor in that uh, you know somebody in some lab has stuck together different pieces of technology without it actually being, you know, something yeah. that anyone intends to take to market. So from that point of view, yes, maybe. Um, mm. The other the other thing worth noting is that the, the cartridge, I mean, it could be any cartridge, I suppose, but the cartridge that's plugged into the top, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a European style, isn't it? I mean, wouldn't these... There was a different... Am I thinking of the right thing? There was a different... Um, um, it actually style. looks more... Yeah. I didn't I know, know there were I different the slot actually looked more Sega Mega Drive-ish. And I remember reading a part in the console war where after Sony got um, bamboozled by Nintendo that they actually tried to work with Sega to do the backlash. Right. But that never fell through either. So they decided to do their own. Hmm. Interesting. There was... Um, uh, it's worth pointing out that the actual um, design for the CD system, if I remember correctly, was it was like an attachment on the bottom of the Super Nintendo. I don't think they ever yeah. intended to combine it into one package. So yeah. if this is a real thing, which I still don't think it is, it might just be that it's a um, dev kit, maybe, but yeah. it looks a bit finished to be a dev kit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like most dev kits, I don't, if people know, um, they're just like, they don't even look yeah. like your PC. They're just boxes. Um, with with a controller yeah. input, you know. Yeah, no offense to you guys, but this doesn't look appealing at all. Then again, it was the 90s, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't want to have a... Con yeah. Well, gaming would be very different today if um, this yeah. had gone ahead. Can Can you guys even imagine? Yeah, I think, I think um, Sega would probably still be with us in a console capacity. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Uh, they made horrible mistakes leading up to the Saturn. And so, yeah, it was only a matter of time before after that. Yeah, I think, I think even in this late stage, I don't think a lot of people have a good idea of what the video game industry should be. You know, is it a commercial thing? Is it uh, something somewhat serious like the Hollywood industry or you know what is it is it just something we make a quick buck on I think Xbox sort of thought that but then they just sort of got roped into you know what it actually is whatever mm. it is <laughs> you mm. know yeah so it's a lot bigger than secret. we actually the thing is isn't this how the last crash happened though <laughs> yeah yeah, it like, uh, got so big that it actually crashed. <laughs> yeah, there's just so much crap out there. Yeah. Mm. It could happen. Um, you have anything you want to say about it, Dave? That is, you've been quite quiet. Not really. <laughs> I mean, whether it's real or not doesn't bother me. I think just um, yeah. thinking back and just the fact that this could have existed is um, is enough for me to find it interesting. Yeah. And um, oh, I also um, liked that uh, somebody asked uh, Yoshida for his comment 
on it and um, he he was very much just um, opposed to talking mm. about it he just he, he thinks it's more fun to keep it um, kind of a mystery I like mm. that yeah I also think even if Nintendo and Sony were working together Sony would have eventually gone into their own business anyway yeah because they would have seen how much money it could make and more and more they would have gone hey we want a piece of this pie on our own rather than share it with Nintendo yeah that's interesting yeah it's possible right. mm. <laughs> yeah. anyway uh, I think we'll move along to our next uh, big topic I've lost my topics where are they okay so um, yeah speaking of the 90s how JP brought up Sega um, Sega were also in the news this week they have um, the CEO, I can't remember his name, he's come out and said that um, he's um, he, he's acknowledged that they have betrayed the trust of their longtime fans with some of the releases over the past um, 10 years, I think he said. So um, it's I think it's very interesting to actually see a company admit that. Usually they'll just um, sort of uh, reaffirm that they're, that they remain dedicated to making great games, releasing great games. But, um, yeah, you don't usually hear companies actually admitting that they betrayed the trust of fans. It's very... It's, uh, w what do you guys think? Uh, do, do you feel betrayed? Um, I know, JP, you're a big Sega fan. Ty, are you much of a Sega fan yourself? Yeah, I mean, I was a massive Sega fanboy back in the Mega Drive and the um, Master System 2 days. Um, do I feel betrayed? I feel um, so Sega is kind of... Um, I don't think I feel betrayed. I, I think they've sort of lost their way a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but betrayed? It's an odd choice of Maybe, words. Yeah, I mean, I didn't... I, I'd never owned the Dreamcast, and I feel um, that that's my big regret that I wasn't cashed up <laughs> around those days, and I didn't buy one. Um, but I don't know. If it, don't think I feel betrayed by Sega. Um, then again, Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> it's yeah. I think I, I think Sonic's the prime example in this of um, yes, mm. Sega losing their way a bit. But, um, it, especially, what was the latest one again? Um, Sonic. Sonic Boom. Uh, Sonic Boom, yeah. So that <laughs> that that's a bit of a betrayal. They they talk that up quite a bit, and then they sort of went, oh, you know what? Development budget. You've got fifty bucks. See what you can see what you can <laughs> come up with. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you yeah, could. Even, a bit. But you could even tell they were they were sort of backing away from it before it was even released. I mean, and they um. Mm. And they didn't let uh, what 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 is it the embargo? They didn't let anyone review it until it was actually out, and that sort of says a lot, you know. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. obviously, how are you supposed to have any um, yeah faith in but that? That's more common than a lot of those um, articles at the time led on. Actually, uh, a lot of embargoes are for the day of release or an hour before the day of release. It's never, like, very rarely. I mean, there are exceptions, of course, with, you know, IGN, you know, the major guys. But very rare do they want, I mean, bloggers and, and, then that, and that kind of stuff, you know, actually saying anything about their game because, yeah. you know, positive positive stories don't really sell. So there's a higher chance that you're going to get a bad review in this day and age than you're going to get a glowing review, you know? Mm. So, yeah. yeah. JP, do you um, feel betrayed? Um, it's, have you read my feature or what I've actually written in there? Oh, no, I haven't. I, I should um, mention I that... <laughs> Yeah. J JP and I are um, writing a feature on this. It won't be a very long one, but um, yeah, yeah. You, you'll hear more of our thoughts later on this. Okay. But um, ju just like a quick, quick thoughts on it, JP. Yeah, I'll do a short summary. Um, 
at the end of the day, for a while, I believed Sega was kind of on the right track for a bit. I mean, a few years ago, they brought out Sonic Colors. And I actually liked that game a lot. I thought that was a great step in the right direction. And they actually topped it up with Sonic Generations on PS3 and Xbox. And once again, I was amazed. It seemed like that was another good Sonic game. And actually reminded me of why I fell in love with it. Because they kind of remodeled all the famous Sonic stages. Yeah, it was, it was a big and, nostalgic hit. I yeah. enjoyed it. And so I kind of liked where they were going. And then they did Lost World. <laughs> and that's where I felt it kind of... I mean, I kind of like Lost World did do a few things right, but they did more things wrong. And so, yeah. And then Sonic Boom came along, and they didn't quite explain that this is not Sonic's new look. And I think, yeah, a lot of people got really upset that this is the new Sonic, or this is the new way we're going to show Sonic. Yeah. And so... I wouldn't say I've been betrayed. I just think they've lost their way and they were on something good and then they decided to reinvent him again. Yeah, it's just disappointing to see them always trying to reinvent Sonic rather than um, sort of... Yeah. Like, obviously, they can't just stick to what works and don't ever change it, but um, mm. you don't need to drastically change how Sonic games play. You just need to make yeah. tweaks here and there introduce new elements and stuff not mm. yeah not go completely different um what, what about i think it's i think it's I interesting think... you look at the actual um sega ceo's comment he said uh i've been talking to employees about how sega should start putting serious consideration into quality from this point on particularly in north america and europe where it's always been more of a focus on schedules so that pretty much sums up where the, they've gone wrong. They've gone, oh, crap, you know what? We need a game out. It needs to launch on September 8th or whatever. It needs to come out. I don't care what you've got. Finish it mm. off and put it in a box. Mm. And, you know, we've seen that with Aliens, Colonel Marines. We've seen that mm. with every Sonic game ever. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, um, it goes on yeah. and on. You know, uh, it, Bioshock, they, they did Bioshock, didn't they? few issues mm. there you know but um yeah yeah that seems to be their problem they're more yeah. they're, they're looking at it from a how much money can we get in the bank this holiday season perspective and they're not looking at it well do we actually have something good that we can sell you know yeah exactly that's a very good point to put ahead actually mm. um the other thing i'm worried about is sonic 2006 left a very sour taste and a lot of fans, didn't it? Will Sega ever be able to win back their trust? Because I think that's what's happening now, and that's why they're not getting the sales they used to back in you the know, day. You know, I know it's going to be a hard, particularly for you, to hear this, but I personally think that Sega, um, what they did to become the Sega we all know is they got rid of uh, peop uh, characters like Alex Kidd, and they said, you know what, you're not doing it anymore for this new generation. I think they need to just put Sonic to bed, come up with something brand new that nobody's ever seen before, and really just, you know, they've, they've got the right idea. They know how to make high-quality uh, high HD games. It's time that yeah. they actually did it. You know, you can't copy Sonic's um, formula and paste it onto a game in 2015. It doesn't work anymore. You know, it's time to come up with something new. You know, yeah, whatever yeah. that is, is up to them, I guess. But, you know. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm on the same page as Ty. I really think um, Sonic just needs a rest. Um, they should just try. If, even if it's not a new IP, if, if they revisit some of their older franchises, there's a lot of great fan franchises in there, which, um, yeah. which we've seen but, in the Mega Drive collections yeah. and everything like that, even in... Um, Sega All Stars yeah. Racing. Just seeing all those characters in there just makes you wish that they, you know, they had new games yeah. and the new generation. So Sega have a lot to work with, and they're just sort of, yeah, not doing. Well, anything. hasn't Sega actually tried that? I think they tried it with Alex Kid a while back, didn't they? They tried to make a new Alex Kid game, and it didn't do too well. 
I don't oh, remember. What was, yeah, I remember, I remember a 3D model for it, Alex Kidd. Did, yeah. Or was that for the Sonic Racing game? Um, Sonic maybe it was. Yes, yeah. Racing, yeah. I thought he, but, um, yeah, I thought he just came back for yeah. Sonic Racing. There wasn't a new uh, Alex Kidd game. Uh, okay. I, I think whatever okay. the um, whatever the magic was that made Sonic so cool uh, is gone. Like you know, the, the people the, the people who made those original games they, they've moved yeah. on. Three D, you know, if you they've tried two D Sonic games and they just haven't been as cool, you know. Yeah. So they just need Sonic to. Sonic Four. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to the drawing board. <laughs> find out what it is that make you know. Find out what it is that. Sega wants to do if they just want to publish that's fine with me <laughs> you know if they, if they just mm. don't make games anymore maybe and just publish you know yeah just pay other people to make games I don't know as long as I can still see Sonic and Smash Brothers I'm happy <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day <laughs> that's all I want I want to use Sonic and Smash Brothers so give me that and I'll be happy <laughs> I mean, I wonder how much money they um, bring in on on um, franchises like Hatsune Miku and and stuff like that. I mean, they're probably doing really well in the in Japan, and they really need to do some research as to what um, mm. what the West wants to play. You know, make 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 a bloody Call of Duty, um, you know, oh. <laughs> clone or something. You know, just just figure it out, Sega. Figure it out. <laughs> I, I struggle to even think of other um, like Western franchises from Sega. You got like Football Manager, and well, that, <laughs> they gave away Bayonetta. So, you know, yeah. what, what else have they got? Well, Bayonetta was, yeah. As in, like, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. games that are yeah. still getting sequels other than Sonic. Yeah. They need to go back to the drawing board, throw everything in the trash. You know, sell your licenses. Just sell Sonic <laughs> to Nintendo. Nintendo are doing better job with Sonic, with Smash Brothers and uh, Mario and Sonic franchise than Sega have in years, decades you, even. You could say so the just, same about um, Mega Man with Capcom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, you could too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway. speaking of, um, speaking of. Uh, uh, I'll hand this over to Dave. Dave. Yeah, no, go go for it, Ty. Now, speaking of uh, Betrayed Trust, Umbrella Corps, uh, a new Resident Evil game or something completely different altogether, a uh, trademark has been filed for Umbrella Corps um, from Capcom. What do you guys take? What's your guys' take on this development? Well, I think we all know how well the Resident Evil franchise is doing. It sort of really has its ups and downs. The past, um, the past couple have been all right. If you just look at the Revelations games, they're pretty, um, they're pretty top notch, but um, your your main series games, Resident Evil Five and Six, they just weren't mm. really what people wanted at all. Um, yeah. The, the fact this is um, trademarked under Umbrella Corps, I really hope it's not. Um, well, actually, it, if it's a spin off, if it's a spin off that's um, uh, really capturing the survival horror sort of thing that Revelations does. Then I, that I would be okay with. I just don't want them to try something that really doesn't fit Resident Evil. They already did it with Raccoon City, and that was terrible. So let's hope they mm. don't go down that road again. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I really like the Revelations games too. I haven't played number two yet, though. I've still, yeah, I've still only played. I've heard mixed reviews on it. Actually, how is it good? Or is it bad? It's probably not no, as good I, as the first, but um, I, I don't think I've played it either. But um, I think yeah. the the formula for that game is best suited for what it was originally intended. The three D, yes, yeah. you know, portable, you know, portable yeah. because it's like short little bursts of like the episodes just work well. Um, yeah, for portables. I mean, but. I remember yeah. I was playing Revelations on the train and I got so freaked out in some scenes <laughs> that I would actually jump and people would just look at me. <laughs> it's yeah. all right. You, you fit in with the rest of the weirdos on, on public transport. Yeah. But um, 
I think I think this particular story is a bit overblown in in the media umbrella cause a, a new trademark. It's the year two thousand fifteen. It could just be a, a website for the upcoming Resident Evil movie. It could be uh, oh, yeah, a, it, it could be a game for uh, iPhone or iPad or something like that. It could just be yeah. you know some guy in the trademark office at yeah. Capcom has just heard somebody use the term and go, no, you know what, I better trademark that before someone else does, you know, or it could be a, yeah. a, a, a um, ultra high definition first person shooting title for Nintendo NX. <laughs> Let's mm. just throw that out there. I, I think it <laughs> yeah. may have been because rumors were circling pre E3 that um, there may be a new Resident Evil game announced, like a new mainline Resident Evil game. When, when, when you've got yeah. a franchise that has the number six in its title, that's not a very good rumor to be spreading. <laughs> like, it's just, um, you know, there's going to be a well, seven. Wouldn't this be seven? Yeah, numbers. What I would like to see is, it, I think going action was a good idea for Resident Evil 4, but it hasn't really ha worked well for five and six. I think they should go back to horror. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, have, they have done that. that. They have done that with Revela not only Revelations, but... Um, also, they remade Resident Evil yeah. 1 in HD. That that was uh, pretty good from what I heard. People really oh, loved wait, that. Wait, is that out? i Re meaning to get that. The original Resident yeah, Evil. came out a while ago, yeah. I think. And they're, oh, even, okay. um, they're even doing Resident Evil Type 0, which I believe was... Was it GameCube or Wii? Which one was that? Oh, okay. Type 0. Uh, it sounds familiar for Wii, but I could be wrong. <laughs> but yeah, that's getting an <laughs> HD remake as well. Yeah, I'm but sorry, I kind of fell out of a loop with Resident Evil lately, so I need to get back into it. That's all right. Yeah, as long yeah. as all the um, the actors remain alive for the last Resident Evil movie, I'm happy. Um, I think this is another case of consoles are getting a bit more sophisticated, and they're saying, "Well, what what sells games? Is it the flashy graphics and the cutscenes?" Um, or is it the gameplay, you know, and and the gameplay, unfortunately, has been taken a bit of a, a, a you know, left alone a bit. Um, mm. But but anyway, on, on the Umbrella Cause trademark, of, who knows? It could just be for their, their softball team, the company softball team. <laughs> you know? A Resident Evil softball team, that would be hilarious. Yeah. Zombies. Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, on the subject of Capcom, I suppose, what was our next topic? I know it was Capcom related. Uh, oh, Street Fighter Street 5. Street Fighter V. Or 5. Or, or V. Uh, the beta details have been revealed for that. Um, that starts July 23rd. I actually haven't looked into the details. Do you guys follow um, your Street Fighter? Big fans? Or? Um... I wish Henry was here. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Henry could talk about Street Fighter for hours. So yeah. Yeah, I find the Street uh. Fighter game kind of like the gameplay kind of clunky for my likes in a fighting game. Uh, I, you know, I'm more of a dead or alive kind of. Oh, okay, um, fair enough. Soul Calibur kind of guy. So yeah, um, but I do believe they showed off a new trailer today ish. Uh, you know, yeah. Ken is coming back. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 With Street Fighter, I like the fighters a lot, but I suck when I go to tournaments. Or oh, I just, yeah, I'm not that good of a fighter. I'm more good at just playing on my own, playing against yeah, the computer, it, and it trying to beat feels, the last guy. It feels I like was, you're really awesome at it, but you're yeah. just not. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, plus, I was always the Mortal Kombat fan. So yeah. Yes, Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Yeah. So that's who I am. Yeah. But the new so, art, art style looks kind of cool. If yeah. You guys seen it? Yeah. Uh, I've always been amazed at how good Street Fighter actually looks, and that's why I wanted to be good at it for so long. But yeah, I've never really understood how to do moves, and I think one day I should actually sit down in the training mode. And actually learn how it's all done. 
rather than mash Real buttons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because I can't even do Ryu's moves in, in Smash Brothers right now. <laughs> so, so for those of you who actually do enjoy the game, um, they're doing a Twitch uh, uh, Twitch thing in uh on <laughs> July 17th to 19th. So go check that out. Um, just streamfighter.com, I think, is where you go. Yep. But okay. you all know that. <laughs> It looks like, from what, I, what I've seen of Street Fighter V, it looks like whatever lessons um, Capcom have somehow uh, learned from Smash Brothers, I mean, they look like they're um, marketing it in a very Smash Brothers kind of way. You know, the character yeah. reveals, uh, the, uh, the video on the trailer. So, yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool. Do we know what, apart from PlayStation... Do we know what consoles it's coming to? Um, um, I think it's just announced for uh, PS4 at this point. Yeah. yeah. I thought Sony got the rights to it, actually, and made it exclusive. Is uh, it? Uh, it may just yeah. be timed exclusive, I would imagine. Something like Street yeah. Fighter. If, yeah. it is, if it is really just exclusive to PS4, then that's probably a big win for Sony. But um, uh, yeah. PC as well. So uh, uh, okay. Steam. PS4. Oh, okay. Yeah. At the moment, yeah. Did yeah. they get console exclusivity then? Probably <laughs> for three months. Yeah. For three months. Oh, and, and then we and, and then there'll be a bunch of Nintendo Doom articles about Wii U not getting it. <laughs> actually, actually, on that subject um, of timed exclusives, I feel like I heard recently that uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider won't be out till like late 2016 for PS4 because as you guys know that's um, a timed exclusive for Xbox One. So I think they've almost got a whole year of exclusivity on that one. Is that the way yes, they're doing it now? <laughs> that, that'll be another game. You know, they'll, they'll have um, Street Fighter Ultimate Edition for PlayStation 4, you know, <laughs> Christmas <laughs> next year. So be on the lookout for that one. It'll be like more realistic hair movements and more pockets. <laughs> <laughs> on her shirt, you know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff that fans love. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering, is is that the new Fat Boy exclusive? Oh, God, I can't even say it right. Is that the what? Exclusiveness or exclusivity or... Exclusivity. Sorry, yeah, exclusivity. <laughs> um, yeah, because Microsoft and Sony have almost the exact same games now, is it all about... Who can get the rights to it first? <laughs> it does feel like that sometimes. Get it for a long time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's funny because apart from like the hardcore gamers, like idiots like us who talk about games every day, like I think most people just rock up to a shop and go, oh, this game looks cool. And even though it came out like six years ago, they'll buy it. <laughs> so, so it's kind of a dumb waste of money from my point of view. To be trying to get timed exclusives and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Which picture is that, Dave? Which one? Is that one of the tournaments? Oh, the one you just put on the newscast now. Oh, no, this is getting ready for the next story, which is No Man's Sky. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you were showing us a Street Fighter tournament video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, now that the cat's out of the bag, <laughs> what, do, what do we think about um, No Man's Sky? So, IGN had a um, first look. Uh, yeah, first look, an eighteen-minute yeah. first look. Thoughts? I think it looks pretty amazing, actually. Um, I was actually a bit disappointed from its um, E3 showing because the E3 before it, No Man's Sky absolutely just smashed it, really, and then. Um, there, because because of it being all procedurally generated, they it was, probably wasn't a good call to just go with um, a very like a very uh, what's the word raw demo because like they just sort of like okay let's go to this one oh there's not really much to do here okay but you know with this first look with IGN they'd already found a good planet that they could actually properly explore properly show off things so. Um, yeah, th so th this, some of the things... This is they what they should have shown off in E3, really. 
Yeah, so they showed off um, mining. Um, they showed off uh, exploring, so you can, you know, uh, discover uh, landmarks and, and animals and name them after yourself and whatnot. Um, and they also showed uh, um, the, uh, what do they call them, the drones, the little, uh, I don't know, if you go oh, to yeah. a planet and just jerk up the joint, <laughs> you'll be shot at by robots. Uh, in, so, in like a Grand Theft Auto sort of way. Yeah, it's very much stolen from that with, with your wanted level. Yeah. I'm a little bit um, concerned at this point from what we've seen. Like going back to what you were saying about like the E3 demo, I just, I just hope the game isn't a lot of, oh, okay, I'm on this planet, I'll scan this, I'll scan that, I'll, I'll shoot that and I'll leave and go to the next one. Like... I really hope there's mm. more to it because that yeah. will get old pretty quickly. Well, did, yeah. they did say in this first look, um, there's like, what are they called, command points or something like that that you can go to. So I imagine there's like um, certain things that you can do, like certain little quests. Yeah, I, I hope that's the case anyway. It, if it was very much just left up to you exploring uh, and trying to really use your imagination to have your own fun, whether you want to kill all the goats and get your wanted level up or, you know, you just want to come in peace and just scan them. Mm. Yeah. I don't, that, that is the one concern that maybe there isn't, an, maybe there's too much to do or maybe there isn't enough to do in this game. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, um, Maxis, Maxis was it? Um, who made Spore? I think Spore was a good in, yes. example of how to go yeah. wrong. You know? Yeah, true. I was when you just have about too to bring much. that up, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When, when you have too much to choose from, you don't make good choices. You know, so yeah. um, hopefully there's a bit of, uh, you know, reeling in from the developer's point of view. But, yeah. you know, surely there is. I don't when, know. When's this, when's this thing coming this, out anyway? Is this an MMO or is it just a single player sort of experience? Thing? No, it's it's uh, MMO. You can come across online players, but oh, okay. the, the chances of you finding your friends there there's no chance of running into your friends unless they implement a feature. You know, join your friend on this planet, which I don't think they'll do. I think they'll just keep it. Um, you know, oh, okay. so you can you just find invite, wherever you find invite another person's planet or something like that. Or no, uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> You'd probably um, usually with these sorts of games, uh, I've forgotten the name of. Uh, uh, anyway, usually these sort of work around a big economy sort of structure, where it's like okay. you're a miner or you're a um, I don't know some you know you sort of build a company, but they haven't really said anything about that. I don't know. So okay. even, even even like um, World of Warcraft and stuff have guilds and that kind of stuff. So maybe they will do something like that. Maybe you're, you're all part of... I don't know, there's just not a lot of... You're, you're a guy who happens to have a spaceship somehow and you decide to <laughs> yeah. go to a bunch of planets. <laughs> what? Okay. I do, hope, I do hope I'm wrong, though, because, it, you know, this is a game everyone who gr grew up playing video games hoped for this game <laughs> at some point, you know, yeah. explore the universe yeah. in a spaceship. But <laughs> hopefully when it hits, it's not Duke Nukem forever all over again. You know? <laughs> well, we, we still don't have a release yeah. date for this game. Um, I think it was mentioned that it might come in 2015. That was last year. But um, <laughs> there's, there's no release date um, given at this yeah. present time. So... We could even we could maybe not even see this game till late next year. Yeah, it's I don't worth think... pointing out this is an indie game as well. So yeah, it's very impressive. Yeah, it is. But yeah. I mean, well, is it impressive? I mean, back in the like Nintendo sixty four era, everyone was an indie developer, <laughs> pretty yeah. much, and mm. no one was tied down to huge studios because there were none. Except for Rare, yeah. maybe, and Nintendo and Sega. <laughs> okay, there was four, yeah. but anyway. <laughs> so, you know. so, I mean, it's cool from that perspective, and indie developers sort of going, you know what, let's just go nuts. 
um, that's cool. I, I hope it works out well in the end, you know. Mm. At this point, are you guys interested in picking up No Man's Sky when it comes out? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll buy it. I just hope there's enough in there to yeah. keep me playing it for more than <laughs> 20 minutes. Yeah. JP? Getting uh, um, for me, there's that curiosity factor. So, yeah, I'll probably consider it if they can still keep me wowed or still keep me interested. Because I do want to find out what it's about and what it's like. Particularly if like they, if sorry, if they um implement like a subscription kind of um deal, like like World of Warcraft and whatnot, like then they really have to work on some kind of questing or some kind of event gameplay. They they can't just you know say I'll oh, pay seventy dollars a month or whatever it is, and go explore the universe. That's that's a bit of an ask. Mm. I think. Yeah. It's another thing. I don't want my experience to be too expensive. <laughs> another thing worth noting is that um, I can't remember too many games where everyone's first experience is going to be completely different in this game. And that may, that, that may even sway a lot of reviews. You may um, get a lot of mixed reviews uh, for this game, which won't help people in deciding whether they want this game or not because some people will say oh this is amazing i got to do this and then someone else might say yeah i've just kept finding empty planets couldn't really find anything to do <laughs> so see i'm wondering like if you look at a game like eve online how it's so uh like there's so much to do for for those who don't have lives you know that's kind of hopefully what they're aiming to um accomplish but if they're i don't know yeah like we've all been saying there needs to be some substance to it you know they can't just put out a game that mm. has you exploring the universe i think that's too too big you know it's not not fun enough <laughs> well there is there is actually an aim to this game i think they said towards the end that um you are actually supposed to try to reach the center of the universe <laughs> Yeah, I th I and think when they pushed on, like, what what are you going to find there? He he didn't instill me with a Peter great Molyneux. ball of confidence. <laughs> you know, he was kind of like, uh. <laughs> yeah, it's probably just more of an endpoint if if um if you really want an endpoint, or maybe it just takes you to a second galaxy, <laughs> mm, a parallel universe. <laughs> <laughs> Where Sonic Boom exists and it's successful. <laughs> oh, JP. Um, anyway, anything else you guys wanted to touch on with No Man's Sky? We don't really need to let this uh, gameplay play the whole way through. No, no cool. Just no, I, I'm else. looking forward to it. I hope it's cool. You know. Mm. Yeah. All right, guys, let's get into some little bits and bobs throughout the week then. So feel free to jump in at any time. Just comment if uh, if you think this is worth discussing or not. Um, Team Rock won the first Splatfest in Splatoon for Europe and Australia. That was a uh, weekend just gone. Did you guys compete yep. in that, by the way? Yep, I competed. Yep. I was Team Rock, and I stayed fresh. Throughout the entire <laughs> yeah. ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was Team Rock too. That was a no brainer, to be honest. Yeah. There I were knew very little would pick Pop. <laughs> there were a lot more Team Rock players than uh, Team Pop players. I think uh, it may have been the biggest like difference compared to any other, because Cats versus Dogs was, I think, pretty even, wasn't it? Yeah. Like in, uh, and then they had do we do do we know what the Japanese um, results were? They had the ramen noodles. They they had the advertised um, yeah, I remember product that. placement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't wow. I don't think I remember the results from that one. Okay. I don't even know. Was it just it was like chicken versus beef or something? Something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, so it's different splat fest for everyone. 
Yeah, mm. we we were huh? combined with Europe, which I found a bit odd. I don't know whether you guys got a lot of laggy matches, but I did, and um, it would have been better for Australia to be grouped with Japan. I, I get why mm. we're grouped with Europe. We're grouped with Europe for like basically everything else, but for something like this, I think I don't want to be grouped with Japan for anything. I'm not, not that good a player. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> of anything like you. you, you Get a game with a bunch of Japanese guys, and you're like, uh, "Here we go," <laughs> you know. Yeah. I don't know. They're yeah. just, they just, they're so good at everything. Um, but a new Splatfest has been announced. Can't remember the day, but it's um, roller, uh, roller. What is it? Roller coasters versus water slides. Yeah, that's uh, for that's for America. So I wonder what. Oh, uh, really? Okay. I think so. Yeah. I could be wrong. So I wonder what we'll get. Um. For <laughs> Europe and Australia, I believe that's next weekend. So uh, it'd be very cool if this was a bi-weekly thing. Mm. I'd I'd be happy with yeah. that. They should chuck in some double XP yeah. to really get that, um, you know, yeah. sort of thing going. Yeah, this actually reminds me of that film we channel. It was called Everyone Votes. I don't know oh, if you yeah, guys remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That. that was cool. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, is it still yeah. going? They all... Have they shut it down? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Anymore. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure they shut it down. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's yeah. like the last one. Should we keep this going or should yeah. we shut it down? <laughs> oh man, let's keep it on like the Weather Channel. Yeah, <laughs> I, loved, I loved Nintendo's concept for the channels. Like, you know, they were yeah. the original apps. You know. Yeah, true. Then, then Apple just kind of went, "Oh, that's a good idea," <laughs> and stole it. But um, anyway, maybe uh, every, got, maybe everyone votes will be uh, Nintendo's first mobile game. Oh, yeah. actually, we did, we didn't talk about that. That was a big topic that we should probably talk about. So let's just do that now. Um, Nintendo have announced that their five mobile games, as we all know, they've got five mobile games in the works. And that's between now and March 2017, only five. And um, they've announced that five of them, all five, will be different franchises, and they'll also be all different genres as well, to sort of mm. try to cater to everyone. Yeah, the ridiculous websites of the world, like Forbes and Business Insider, are saying that uh, Mario and Zelda are surefire bets. I think that's yeah. ridiculous. I think Mario will appear in in the sense of something like Doctor Mario, maybe. But I don't don't yeah. know. Zelda Zelda is never going to be on a mobile. <laughs> I, I don't nah, see it. I, I totally see a Zelda thing on a mobile. Yeah, it'll be something like a treasure thing, though. That's what I was going to say, like a treasure sort of hunt thing. But yeah. I don't know. Maybe yeah. maybe not in the first five games. I think. Nintendo yeah. could really surprise us with something original, or yeah. um, I, I really, I really hope that they don't go down the path of just, you know, looking yeah. at looking at what's on the market now and thinking, okay, yeah, yeah, we could do an endless runner with Mario. Okay, we could do uh, an endless jumper with this character. You know, just I, yeah. I don't, I don't just I want Nintendo IP slapped on already um, yeah. developed mobile I games. I was actually thinking of this today that they could actually, to really sell off Splatoon, they could get Squid Jump as a mobile game. Oh, yeah, I definitely. Think that really yeah, work. Th they yeah, should, it would work. They should do it as like a compilation because you've not only got Squid Jump in Splatoon, you've got the other ones that you unlock from the Amiibo. And it's a bit disappointing yeah. that they're, you know, locked behind that paywall sort of, of you know, if you don't have yes. the Amiibo, then you can't play those mini games. You know what, mm. this entire topic makes me sick. Like, it just feels like Nintendo have sort of just watched Kotaku.com over and over and over again and gone, you know what, fine, we'll do it. We'll do it. With, we'll get the best um, game developer company in the world, DNA, uh, DNA and we'll, um, <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it for five games. We'll make five yeah. Nintendo games, and then you can all shut up because we're <laughs> sick of hearing about it, you know, and they'll, uh, mark my words, these games will come out, the same people who have demanded Nintendo make mobile games 
from since 2007 will turn around and say each and every one of these five games suck compared to the games that are that Nintendo normally make. They'll be panned. It'll be a big laughing stock. And I think Nintendo will have the last laugh because they've been saying this from day one. Video games and mobile phones are not the match made in heaven that the media are making out making it out to be, you know. So mm. that's my little rant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I can I, agree but, with you. you know, yeah. But on the same token, don't be a, don't be surprised if F Zero comes I think we'd discuss this at the E three yeah, um, thing. Don't be yeah. surprised if like that F Zero game from um like a lot of the concepts that were in Nintendo Land on Wii U, don't be surprised if they make their way to mobile. Like Yeah. Like the F Zero game and probably what was another good one? I don't know. They're all in there. Go the check don- it out. The Donkey Kong <laughs> one was another good one. I like that the one. Don- yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Donkey Kong. I really like the Zelda one. <laughs> that was a the, nice fun one. Or Chase yeah, yeah. Mario. Yeah, Chase Mario awesome. was just the best. <laughs> yeah. 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 Alright guys, anyway. Uh let's get back to our little sort of news topics. Oh, I'm just going to check the Twitch chat because uh, Tavy from the Skype chat has been talking to us and he's not getting any responses. Is that who Blurred Wolf is? Yeah, that's that's who Blurred Wolf is. <laughs> VB versus what? I don't get what he's saying there. Australian yeah. exclusive. Yeah. It maybe would Sometimes. have made sense if I was actually reading this as we were talking. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, no. Again. We'll, no, it just we'll sounds the like the entire thing again. <laughs> yeah. That's what I've been thinking. There still seems much unanswered about this game. Which game? <laughs> I, I like what he says about um, uh, that two of them, will, at least two of them will be puzzle games, but Nintendo will argue that they're, you know, different types of puzzle games. Because puzzle games is what you'd expect on a mobile most, really, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, what else yeah. can you do? Like, puzzle games wave the thing in the air. Um, you know, the best the best kind of tablet games, I think, were in Nintendo Land. So bring those on, but why don't we just buy a Wii U instead? And, by the way, a Wii U is way cheaper than $1,000 for a bloody iPhone. What are parents yeah. thinking? Like, in what universe is an iPhone cheaper than a console? Have I have, have I missed something? Yeah, am I an idiot? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Anyway. Tati is telling you not to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Poor Tavi. Okay. Uh, anyway, our news topics: Skylanders Superchargers, which we saw in Nintendo's E3. That's getting a dark edition. So not only for these crazy Amiibo collectors that actually want all of them, including the Skylanders ones. Not only do you have to buy... Uh, what's the name of the Donkey Kong? It's got some stupid name. And about, yeah, I've got it. I've got it. I've you've got, got it? it? I've lost it. No way. <laughs> Talks amongst yourself while I do a search in my email. So, so there's a DK and there's a Bowser, but now there's a dark DK and now there's a dark Bowser as well. And that's a separate sort of addition as well. So... You would have to buy two editions of Skylanders Superchargers to get those four Amiibo. I don't think you can get them separately. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so that's a good question. They come in two starter packs. Um, am I right to think that there's a, there's a Turbo Charge Donkey Kong and Hammer Slam Bowser? Yeah, that's in it. two <laughs> different starter packs. Like, um, is that Donkey Kong starter pack and a Bowser starter pack, or is it just I'm pretty the sure Nintendo they, starter pack? I'm pretty sure they come in the one, although it's just like DK right. on the front of it. It could be. I could be wrong. Surely, it's, um, surely there's not four different packs. <laughs> no. <laughs> there probably <laughs> is. And, and we'll yeah, all it's buy Skylanders. <laughs> Bloody Skylanders. Here we go. Oh. Skylanders Superchargers Dark Edition. Um, yeah. 
The Skylander Superchargers Dark Edition includes unique toys that true Portal Masters will want in their collections. All Dark Edition starter packs will be available for a suggested retail price of $119.95 and include Dark Spitfire, Dark Hot Streak, and two-sided ultimate collector poster and the highly sought after chaos trophy which is the only way to unlock special chaos gameplay content uh, dark super shot stealth elf and dark sea shadow will be available exclusively in the dark edition startup packs for xbox one xbox 360 playstation 3 and playstation 4 the wii u dark <laughs> edition startup pack will include dark turbocharged donkey kong and dark barrel blaster exclusively uh, different unique adventure, including Dark Hammer Slam Bowser and Dark Clown Cruiser, will be made available on the Nintendo Wii system. What? Ah. <laughs> Should have read that three days ago when it came out. Wait, uh, what? Is, yeah, so is basically, Hammer Slam okay. Bowser isn't Wii exclusive, is it? So there's a Wii U Dark Edition starter pack will include the Dark Turbocharged Donkey Kong and Dark Barrel Blaster. And a different unique adventure. Oh, yeah, that's vehicle. Dark yep. Hemis- Sorry. Yeah. I, I, I didn't know what you were talking about when you first said it. The what is it? The barrel blaster. That's it's vehicle. Uh, yeah, they so come with a vehicle. Yeah. yeah. So there's so there's two starter packs. There's two dark edition starter packs. One for Wii U and one for Wii. The Wii U has a dark turbocharged Donkey Kong, and the Wii version has a dark Emma Slam Bowser. Oh Wait, wow. The hate. Cue the hate. So, for the <laughs> amiibo hunters out there, you have to buy four versions. Four versions. You have to buy two Wii U versions. So this is going to run you like six hundred bucks. <laughs> Good luck. I mean, I'll do it because you know <laughs> I'm a grown man with a job who likes to collect children's toys, but <laughs> um, I won't be happy about it. Uh. <laughs> Oh, so you can't buy them separately. Well, what about those people who already own a Wii U or a Wii? I mean, shouldn't we be able to just buy the Amiibo? Uh, Maybe it just hasn't been announced yet. You'd hope no. they bring them out separately. They probably just only have the um, like starter packs announced because they want people to yeah. pre-order those. So they actually pre-order the game, not just um, go and whack down a pre-order for mm. just the Amiibo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's another development that we've all skimmed over. I don't think... Why hasn't anybody announced this? Like, I haven't read this in the media anywhere. Okay, so... The Skylanders Wii U starter pack uh, is $99.95. It includes Turbocharged Donkey Kong and the Barrel Blaster. Uh, the, Wii Le- the Skylanders Wii and 3DS starter packs... Uh, 99 and 89, 95 respectively, and include the Hammerslam Bowser and the Clown Cruiser. So there's three oh starter packs in the vanilla Donkey Kong and and Bowser, <laughs> and it's and there's two yeah. in the dark flavor. What about the 3DS? Does, do they get a dark version or have <laughs> they just? Is that a typo? Surely oh, the 3DS. What well, it doesn't get a dark version. Uh, Wait, Wait, there's a Skylanders on 3DS too? Yeah, there's a, there's a Skylanders <laughs> for 3DS and Wii. And, oh, God. You, you see why I never read these press releases? It's so confusing. <laughs> and, and they don't even say that they don't even say PlayStation 3. They say PlayStation Computer Entertainment System by Sony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just so hard to read. But anyway. So, so you, could, you could yeah. theoretically buy at least three versions across three platforms. You could get the 3DS version vanilla, then Wii U version dark, Wii version dark, but then you'd still have to buy either one of... The Wii version dark. You'd, ha- you'd have to buy either one of Wii or Wii U version vanilla to get that um, that DK that's non-dark. Does that make the- sense? Yeah, so basically, if you want every single one of the Nintendo Skylanders, you need to buy four four starter packs. So eventually, so you'll actually have. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard this anywhere. Surely somebody's noticed this. No, only us. This is why. This is why Aussie Gamer is on your podcast. (laughs) This is is why people should be. This is why people should listen to us. Yeah. (laughs) Yet we only have. 
four listeners. One of them's me. Um, Good work. Well, yeah. start saving now because it releases in September 24 and 25 in New Zealand. So get saving, kitties. Mm. Although, yeah. mind you, it would probably be the only amiibo that won't sell out immediately because <laughs> <laughs> no one can afford it. <laughs> All right, guys. I don't uh, know about you, but Pikachu is still in stores. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a few that are still, yeah, not really selling as much anymore. Um, okay, some other quick little things. Dragon Quest Builders, that was the um, game that they were teasing. I forget the developer now. But that they were teasing a new Dragon Quest game. It's just a Minecraft clone in the end. Uh, I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't, it's not just a Minecraft I, I don't think we need this at fair. all. I don't think we need this at all because we just got one, but it's it's a very, um, uh, what's, what's the word? You can, you, no, you can just you can justify the Lego Minecraft clone. I forget what it's called now. Is it Lego World? Or something? Uh, the um, Lego, World. Lego World. Yeah, like you yeah. can justify that. It makes sense, Lego. But why is there a Dragon Quest version of Minecraft? I don't get it. Yeah. Because How, Dragon Quest Minecraft Builders. is big now. We have to Dra copy it and copy it. Are we going to get a Legend of Zelda Minecraft? Oh, I hope so. Probably. <laughs> That's I probably why there's a delay. <laughs> oh, no. Dragon, <laughs> Dragon Quest Builders is a completely new block-making RPG where players must recapture and restore the land of Alfgard after it's destroyed by the Dragon Lord. The vast world of Alfgard is expressed through blocks, which players can freely create, destroy, and remodel as if they're in a sandbox or playing with building blocks. Please try to create an innovative Alfgard. Well, why is it up to us to create an innovative game? <laughs> you should be doing it, Yuji Hori. I love these enthusiastic press releases. Uh, readings, Ty. You should do this every week. <laughs> yeah, should, this should be my job. <laughs> oh well, uh, that'll be my my little uh, thing That's going forward. Thing. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know. I think it's cool because I don't really like Minecraft. So uh, you know, but I like the idea of it. So, <laughs> so I think it's cool to have an RPG slash Minecraft thing going on. So it's cool. Yeah, be even I cooler if they um, did it for Nintendo. Because Nintendo don't really have a Minecraft yeah. <laughs> solution. But this one's a PlayStation 4, I think. Is it just PS4 exclusive? Uh, and PlayStation 3 and Vita. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so, mobile games, we were talking about those earlier. There's a new one from Ubisoft, Rayman Adventures. They already have one, Rayman Jungle Run. It's basically the same, I think. Well, we'll, we'll be, it'll be a new adventure. It's called Rayman Adventures because, you know, it's the second one. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, it, it may be worth playing. People enjoyed Jungle Run, I think. Actually, we put up a review for Jungle Run. I, I can't remember who did it, but somebody enjoyed it. Um, so, yeah, that's a thing, if anyone's interested in that. Square it looks, Enix. Sorry. Squeak. Go, uh, go no, on, Ty. I got nothing. You got nothing? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they've just um, uh, just just copied and pasted a lot yeah. of what was happening in uh, Rayman Legends again. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Square Enix will present a live stage demo of Final Fantasy XV at Gamescom. I'm sure JP's looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of falling out of a loop with Final Fantasy. Yeah, I need to get back into it. I thought you were still well, playing that that demo, the what's it called? Episode Duske. <laughs> Didn't they get enough? Uh, I've still been playing Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Uh, okay. The cool yeah. thing about um, Final Fantasy fifteen is that um it's kind of like almost a reboot in that it's uh, uh a little bit more realistic. They they're saying that's more realistic, as realistic as a town that runs on a giant crystal can be. Um and it's going to have more modern sort of themes. So basically, I think one like the rich city has um, yeah, um, basically they're, they're still modern, but the rest of the towns that don't have as much um, 
a fortune, I guess, uh, uh, have regressed back to the medieval sort of way of life, which there's a lesson to be learnt there. I think <laughs> I think we should all live like it was in the medieval days. But anyway, it'd be cool to see it live on stage at Gamescom. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah. I've completely lost my I don't know, I've been playing too now. much Splatoon and Smash Brothers. I haven't had time to really check out the demo yet. <laughs> yeah. What else are we expecting to see at Gamescom? When is that again? Is that soon? I think it's soon. Month well, away, it's uh, Europe's, Europe's biggest trade fair. You should really know that it's come on load Google. Um, <laughs> it's <laughs> happening on the, the 5th to the 9th of August. Yeah, so that's pretty soon. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to it only because it's going to be a bit different this year because usually it's place, uh, well, usually it's Sony that goes. So there's like a lot of PlayStation stuff. And um, obviously uh, that's where the Vita would really shine because you wouldn't see anything of Vita at um, E3. But this year, um, Sony aren't going to Gamescom. Uh, uh, well, they might be, but they're not doing like a a big conference sort of thing. Yeah. If but, they can scrape up something for Vita, they might pop in. <laughs> yeah. If they can um, get the three titles that are actually coming to Vita this year, yeah. then um, may maybe they can work something out. Um, Microsoft uh, bringing Xbox One stuff to Gamescom. In fact, they had already announced pre E3 that there were some games that weren't going to be at E3 because they were saving them for Gamescom. And I think, I could be wrong, I think Crackdown 3 was one of them. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember the other ones now, but yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to see what they've got. Anyway, it'll be different. Because mm. I can't remember, um, I can't remember a Microsoft Gamescom conference in the past. Surely they've been to Gamescom once. I think they go every year, don't they? But whether the, or not they do something spectacular is yeah. a different story. You no, know? no, they they definitely go and like do um on floor demos and stuff, but not like not like a big um conference that they stream online and everything. Yeah, I don't think like I think what we all need to remember about these trade shows are that they are trade shows that they're there to sell products to uh, retailers so if you come away from them unimpressed it's because you know it's still really for you but um uh yeah they they're doing some some cool things like the video game live uh concert which should be streamed i think this year yeah um guys Yo. yeah i've got to go okay, oh, no. so it's nice chatting with you and, no worries jk yeah. Catch you next time. Thanks. See you later. Yeah. Okay, anything else? I, th I think we're pretty much done anyway. Okay. Anything else you wanted to add, Ty? Any other uh, news? No, I'm good. You're no, good. Um, no, no, there was one big story um, that we broke and nobody seemed to care about. Um, good Game is going to the Enmore Theatre. And oh, yes. for Aussie Gamer readers, we're trying to set up a giveaway so um stay tuned for that oh that's cool mm. so that's sydney by the way just trying to get my window capture working again and it doesn't want to so i was just going to finish off our stream for today with um a neat video i saw that nintendo of europe tweeted so i didn't know this was a thing in art academy uh atelier i haven't played any of the Art Academy games, have you, Ty? No, but I've, no. I've been meaning to. <laughs> so, so the newest one, which I think only came out this month, last month or something, uh, you can make time-lapse videos. So of like, um, you know, your drawing from start to finish sort of thing. And there was this very impressive um, Mario Sunshine-esque picture that somebody drew, somebody very talented. Mine would end up just being stick figures, but um, by the way, not not to point this out or anything, but um, I think it's pronounced Atelier Art Academy. 
Atelier. Atelier. Okay, Atelier. sorry. <laughs> I've never known how to pronounce because there was this oh, other I've game that I, there was this other game that I played which um, had the same bloody title and I didn't know how to pronounce it. There's like a series well, of them, isn't there? Atelier games. There's a series of them. Is there? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Something for next week, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so I think that's playing in the stream. Hopefully it doesn't look too terrible. Um, thank you for any listeners that are tuning in. I know I can see some of you. And, um... Oh, Tavi wants me to mention Rocket League. Yeah, okay. No, we can quickly do that. So, Rocket League uh, came out this week. It's free for PlayStation Plus members, so you should definitely go download that. I still need to um, play that. That's very loud. That is very loud. Sorry about that. I can I can either have it loud or n no volume at all. Thanks, it's thanks loud Twitter. Or not at all. Thanks Twitter. Wow. Okay. Um, and Tavi does raise a good point that um, Minecraft. There was a Minecraft clone on Wii U. It's still on there on the on the eShop. I can't remember what it's called, but I do is remember. It, is it on Wii U? There's one on um, 3DS. Is it Ucraft? It could be. I'd, it, there's probably a couple. I know there was one on 3DS. Um, kind of, I think it was like Mine Shape or something like that. It, it, you know, <laughs> something. There's plenty yeah. of Minecraft clones out there if you really go looking for them. There's, mm. there's, there's probably as many Minecraft clones as there are, um, you know, simulator games. Like... Yeah. Uh, like American train truck simulator, yeah, train simulator, exactly. Truck all right. simulator. All right, Ty, it was uh, it was good to chat with you, and I'll, I'm yeah, looking forward should. to next week. So we'll continue doing this once a week, every week, hopefully, if all goes according to plan. And, yep, and, uh, if, and I the, hope uh, if the people want it, if the people want it, of course, which I'm sure they will, seeing as we break news like that uh, Skylanders thing. <laughs> I'm not seeing many pitchforks outside my window yet, <laughs> but the night is young. <laughs> All right, no worries, guys. We'll leave you with that um, Art Academy video. And until next time, see ya. See ya. Yeah, bit awkward. Yeah, it's all right. We just need to find a, a good flow, I guess. Cool. All righty. Well, I better get going then. Let me. Yeah, no worries. Let me know how they are. <laughs> how many people we end up getting? Are you are you um publishing it on YouTube or something or? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Radio. I'll catch you later.